This evening, like I said, we appreciate each one that's come back to be with us tonight. We just ask you to mind the Spirit of the Lord. Be much in prayer for uh, those that's not here with us. John and Amy went to uh, Jonesboro to pick up uh, Tanner and Tucker. Tucker or Tanner wasn't feeling well, so you just pray for them. Whatever's going on there, God will take care of that. So, but we do appreciate you tonight. We always like to give everybody an opportunity to serve the Lord. So maybe somebody tonight's got a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord. Hearts and minds are clear tonight. This is our Wednesday night Bible study, and we always open up with altar prayer. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer on your heart. Amen. Let's remember this. Anybody else? Anybody? We appreciate that. Good news. Anybody else? Yeah, let's remember Christmas. Anybody else? Amen. Let's remember this. Anybody else? If not, there's plenty on our prayer list to be in prayer about. Do be praying one for another. Do I, I do desire your prayers this evening. I haven't felt well all evening this evening. I don't know if it's something I eat or what uh, what we've done, what we eat for lunch or what. I told Melissa, I said, I just don't feel good. So you pray for us and we'll just be all right. And many others on this prayer list, we've got a lot tonight that are sin sick, amen, and I know there's a lot on here that are physically sick, but there's a lot that's sin sick, so you be much in prayer for them. So everybody can and we will gather around the altar and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Dear me, Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, to some of ourselves before thee. Lord, we thank you for another day and another opportunity, God, to gather out. And we pray, Lord, for those that's not with us tonight. We don't know who they are, where they're at, or what's going on with them. But, Lord, I know you're able, God, to take care of them and just get them back here in your house where they belong. Lord, we pray for those that's on this prayer list. We pray for Ralph Mink, pray for Diane Eisenhower, the Lord's Anderson, Brooke Hutchison, Clifton and Adam, Eddie Bentley, Louise Markham, Jamie Steele, Kevin Bernard, the Reason family. Jim Perry, Rosie Osborne, David Wilson, Doug Taylor, Helen Duggar, Cindy, Ashley, and Riley, Kelly Odom, June and Campbell, Daniel Furches, Danny McAlay, Tammy Taylor, Blake Atwood, Joan Pope, Randy Jenny, Larry Hawkins, Willa Gray Adam, Harold and Shirley Rash, Jody Dunn, Angie Doherty, Gary, uh, Skyland, Joe McCress, Bree Harris, Carl Wiggins, Andy Lowe, Rachel Petit, Ryan, Maitley, Mike Reynolds, Holly McFadden, Eddie's family, Ebenezer Christian Home, Tony Jennings, Nella Corby, Sue Hensley, Dorothy Keller, Danny Buchanan, Linda McCulloch, Lucas Perdue, Pug Tester, William Williams, Harley Rankin, Ben Bowers, Penny and Jane Head, Ed Ham, Greg Prophet, Lane Miller, Margie Stout, Sanford, Hump Sanford and Jane Humphrey, Sue Williams, Frank and Joetta Maine, uh, uh, Brenda Lunsford, Andy Osborne, Cliff Kressler, Diana Harmon, uh, Jerry Jones family, Crystal Duggar, Michelle Worley, David Ward, uh, Melissa, uh, Crystal Owens, Bronson Alexander, Ross Dow, Willis Lewis, Patty Osborne, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Diane Wagner, Delilah Campbell, Buffy Kinnett, Delmer, Wendell Carraway, Marie Jennings, Dustin Rankin, June Brady, Mike Lipford, 
Richard Stidham, Jackie Fry, Margaret Eisenhower, Bob Miller and wife, Anthony Bunning, John Yates, Joseph Rourke, Bob Hecht, uh, Nathaniel Rice, Brianna Poor. Lord, I know you know every name that's just been read, and I pray that you'll see to them only the way that you can. Lord, be with every Christian and every person here tonight. Fill them up, Lord, with what you what we need. Give us encouragement and strength, and Lord, everything we need to fight this journey, we give you all the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Man, if you got your Bible tonight, over in the book of Ephesians, chapter number one. Ephesians, chapter number one. I don't really remember how far we got. We're going to pick up about, I think we got through verse eight and we'll start at nine, but we're going to start back at verse number six just because that's where I want to go. Just where that's where I feel led to go. I know Buck's back there holding up fingers and shaking hands and shaking his head and everything else. He's going to have to learn sign language. I can't hear him back there anyway. And if I. But we're going to pick back up here about verse number 6, and I just think it was a little, uh, it's very, it'd be good for us to pick back up there. We talked a little bit last week about predestination and what Christ meant, what Paul meant, what Christ meant by that, and not that he is, we are predestined, we don't have a choice in where we're going, but we are, it was predetermined, it was predestined for the way of salvation to be provided, it was provided for each and every one, not just part of us, and the rest of these verses go right along with that predestination and that verse number five. And you read verse number five there, and you can see that he was talking there about the adoption uh, by Jesus Christ himself, and, uh, but we'll pick back up here at verse six, and he's talking about that, and he goes on, and he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, uh, wherein he hath made us accepted in, in the beloved. Um, Christ is our Redeemer and our Beloved. And because of the plan, because of the order of things, uh, and the way things were created and way God sent His Son uh, to give us that opportunity to be saved. Uh, he said, over the, we told you over in the book of Jeremiah, he said this, in the days of Judah, shall, uh, um, in his days Judah shall be saved, uh, and Israel and shall dwell safely. Uh, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So, so we are accepted in, we, we're never going to, you'll never be saved within yourself or of yourself. But we can only be saved through the blood of Christ. And we can only be accepted by the blood of Christ. Verse 7 says this, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. I, we got it because of His grace. It's nothing to do with us, but all of Him. Uh, verse number 8 said, Wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Uh, in other words, he's, uh, he, he's not only forgiven us, but He's also uh, given us the necessary uh, equipment to be able to walk this walk each and every day. Uh, now, I know the world and the devil would like to convince people uh, that living a Christian life is too hard. Amen. Um, well, it is too hard if you try to live a Christian life and you try to live a selfish life um, or you try to live a worldly life. Amen. Um, it's kind of like getting hooked. It's kind of like trying to run a race. Um, when you're out there, if you've ever watched anyone run a race or getting ready to run the race, uh, you'll see them out there stretching. You'll see them out there uh, trying to get limber. You'll see them out there trying to warm up. Uh, You'll see them out there getting ready. You'll see them practicing. You'll see them doing all kinds of things before the race. But one thing you will not see when it comes race day and race time, you will not see them step into the blocks of a, of a, of a meet and get ready to run and tell somebody or, or, or bring out there with them extra weight. Amen. When, when you talk about people not only running a race, a foot race, 
You talk about people running, driving race cars. Uh, one of the biggest things that race cars are notorious for uh, outside of aerodynamics and cheating with the engine. Uh, you know, they, they are notorious to try to shim uh, and try to skim off every ounce of weight that they can uh, that they might be able to run the race. Uh, and that's important for us to realize that it, why it is so hard, why people think it is so hard uh, to live a Christian life. Uh, it's because they're carrying way too much baggage. They're carrying way too much weight, uh, carrying way too much burdens and things of the cares of this world uh, to be able to enjoy the Christian walk. Uh, hey, I tell you what, a lot, you know, a lot of times uh, we'll get to worry in our heart and we'll get worried about things. And listen, I've told you many times over, over my life, I have been a worry wart and I, and I worry about things a lot of times when I shouldn't. And here's what the Lord has shown us and what, what worry is, it's just the absolute opposite of faith. Amen. Now, that's exactly the opposite of what God wants us to do. He wants us to have faith in Him and trust in Him. He has abounded in us uh, with all wisdom and prudence. He's given us the necessities, uh, the things that we need to be able to fight in, uh, in this world uh, and to face the things that we face. Uh, in verse number 9, he said this, Having made it known unto us the mystery of his will, uh, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Uh, the mystery is just how a, a God, uh, how a just God of a law could ever justify a sinner uh, uh, such as me and I. I. That is a mystery to me, amen. I, I, I don't understand that, but I do understand that all I have to do is give him my life, amen. I, you want to know what he revealed? He revealed the plan to us. Uh, he didn't reveal the why, amen. I, uh, well, he did reveal the why, too, because he loves the whole world, amen. For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, he revealed it all unto us, the plan, the why, the how, uh, and the what, amen. Uh, and we just need to be, uh, it, it's up to you and I to act upon that. Uh, just because Jesus died on the cross, just because he rose the third day, uh, just because he plan, had to offer the most perfect plan, uh, does not mean everyone's going to heaven. Uh, what it does mean is everyone has an opportunity. I, I believe everyone will get a chance of, I've had this question brought before about what, what about people over in foreign countries and far lands and tribes and all those things. Uh, as many missionaries as we have, uh, as many people have been out, uh, they have been out. Now you say they may not have spoken to every person, but they have spoken to some in their family, most likely, uh, during some type of generation. Uh, uh, and that's why I say it's important that you and I take the words that we're able to hear. Uh, we are custodians of that word. Uh, and not only are we custodians of that word but we are also missionaries of that word we are to take that word and to share it out with others because it's important that our family knows what the word of God is it's important that our family and our, just like in those tribes and those places out there God had the same predestination order he had the same he had the same scripture he had the same order of events and the same way for them to be saved and it was passed to them it's important to us to pass that along, amen, uh, and, and to let people know, listen, if I have heard uh, that how the plan of salvation, uh, and I did not share that with somebody else, uh, then that is on me, amen, uh, their blood could be upon my hands because I did not do what God would have us to do, nor did I share what God has, uh, had the plan that God has for them, uh, it's up to us and up to individuals to act on it once they have heard what that plan is and how, how they act upon that. Uh, uh, no matter how bad people want to go to heaven, uh, they still have to act on the plan of salvation. They still have to trust in God and come His way. Nobody's going to do it uh, differently. Uh, they're all going to do it the same. Uh, book of, uh, verse number 10, he said this, he said this, uh, that in the desperation uh, of the fullness of times, uh, he might gather together in, uh, in one all things in Christ, uh, both which are in heaven and, uh, and which are on earth, uh, even in him. He redeems men uh, in the order that he might hire, uh, uh, that, that he might that he might gather everything together unto himself. Uh, in other words, he's telling us now that. 
the fullness and the disposition, uh, uh, the disp- disposition of Christ. In other words, uh, His position, and it, it is His light. And he wants us. Uh, he wants everyone to come. Uh, he wants everybody to be fulfilled. Now, you can't know what being full and f- being for, and for having a fulfilling life is. Uh, until you really know the Lord, amen, and that you are really doing what God would have you to do. We can say that life's good, and you know, we're here tonight, life has to be pretty good, amen. I, I, I didn't see no, I didn't see anybody walk in, amen, I was walking up the road to get here, I, I didn't see anybody on horse or buggy out there, I didn't see nobody coming in on camel, I didn't see anybody riding donkeys. I didn't see anybody drug in. Amen. We're all blessed to be able to be here today. We walked in under our own accordance, uh, under our own strength and power. Those things was given to us by God. Amen. Uh, it's up to he, he, he wants us all to come in. Uh, listen to what he said in verse, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. You ought to remember this. It hasn't been that long since we read it. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek, and there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, uh, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, he doesn't hold esteem one over the other, amen. Uh, he doesn't try to put people on pedestals and, and, as we do. And we'll lift up uh, sports figures and actors and singers and entertainers of all sorts. And we'll, we'll lift those people up and we'll put them on pedestals and we'll idolize them and all those things. Uh, aren't you glad that God is no respecter of persons? Amen. Now, he doesn't have one plan for the for for you and one plan for me, a different plan for me. I, but it's all the same plan. Now, and he said there that that we are all one in Christ. So our problem is, you know, we've got a lot of different movements today, and all the things looking that they holler equal rights, but that's not what they really want. They don't want equal rights. What no, they 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 want their way. Amen. Now, whatever group is in order or in, in, in power at that time, that's what they want. Uh, they, they want that group to have their power and nobody else to have any more power but for them to have it. It doesn't matter if it's women's rights or men's rights or all these other rights that's going on out there, what they're saying. Here's what Christ says. Uh, if you get it right in him, uh, it's all the same. Uh, it's no, we're, not, we're not male or female. Uh, here we are. We're lo- he is looking at us equal. We're not Greek or Jew. Uh, in other words, he's saying there's no division there uh, that we're going to hold higher than the other, uh, that we're going to hold higher, more higher than one uh, or more high, the other higher than this. Uh, listen, I think it's important uh, that we see the things that, that God would have for us uh, and that we treat each one uh, uh, the same, amen? Uh, we treat each other the same, and we, we love one another. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're red, yellow, black, or white. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're short or tall. Uh, it don't matter if you're skinny or round, amen? Uh, all that really matters is that Christ loves all of us, amen? Uh, Christ loves each and every one the same, uh, and we are to treat people with the same love and respect uh, that Christ has for us. Uh, you want to know, uh, it, it, here's the thing about a lot of times uh, we talk, people talk about being a good Christian and want to do the right thing and do this, but yet we fail in one of the simplest ways, amen? Uh, we fail in some of the most simple ways uh, of really being Christ-like, uh, and that's to treat everybody the same, amen. I, I, I seen something the other day that I'm sure would resonate with a lot of people. Hopefully, it resonates with people besides myself. Uh, you know, uh, I, a lot of times I'm home most of the time before Melissa is. Most of the time I'm home through the day. I say most of the time. It's probably 50, 60, 40 right now. But most of the time we're home through the day. I seen a little thing the other day that said this. Uh, uh, I'm uh, all day. I'm waiting for my spouse to get home. I, can't wait for them to get there, and then when they get there, I just automatically turn into somebody that I shouldn't be, and I start criticizing. So it's easy for us to see the faults in other people. It's easy for us to see other people's failures and mistakes, but we are to be a respecter of person and want to be treated the same way, and we are to treat others the same way that we want to be treated. I'm glad that we have a God that loves us. Uh, listen, uh, I'm, listen. If, uh, if God only accepted gray-haired people, son, you'd be in and like that. Yeah. And I would be not far behind you, amen. Uh, 
my sister, my daughter-in-law in Sierra said that I said I was getting a lot more gray hair. And I told her, I said, you're exactly right, but I didn't have the first one until I got a daughter-in-law. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that I know of. I, amen. Uh, we ought to be equal to all of them. So, see, I don't cut her no slack either. Amen. Uh, we all, we, we are to love one another and care one for another. Uh, hey, listen, God didn't just let us in because of gray hair. Uh, he didn't let us in because of no hair. Uh, he didn't let us in because of long hair. Uh, but he let us all, he lets us in because and through the blood of Christ. Uh, said over here in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, he said this, uh, for, for in him we live uh, and move and have our being uh, as, as certain also uh, of your own poets have said, uh, for we are his offspring. Uh, we are to act and be just like Christ. You know what that would make us? Christians. <laughs> Christians, amen. We was up, up, up at the ball field last night. And there's a bunch of hoodlums up there, just so you know. I'm just giving him a hard time. But we was up at the ball field last night, and after the game, we was walking out, and we just got to talking to somebody else and some, some other people, and we was walking out. And one, Jason and Riley and Bailey was coming down through there, and somebody said, I knew them had to be still kids. I mean, the blonde hair, the blue eyes, there's a lot, there's more than still kids got blonde hair and blue eyes, just so y'all know that. I mean, just so the world knows that. But most people associate that with our boys or our kids. And I thought, you know, it, it's easy a lot of times. We, we are to look like our father. Amen. Uh, we are to look like and act like and be like and speak like uh, our father speaks. Uh, he said there, said, for, for in him we live. Uh, I didn't really know what living. We, we thought we was living a good life. Uh, we thought we were having fun out there in the world. Uh, but I didn't know what a good life was and living a full life was until I just give it all to him. Unless, until I let him have my whole entire life. Now listen, it ain't always easy. And even and being a pastor and being a preacher and being a, being a Christian, it, it's not always easy to know what decisions you are to make. Uh, but the problem when, you, when it comes time to make a hard decision, I, I have realized that when I take it to God, the reason I'm still having a hard time making the decision or understanding what God's will is is because most of the time I, don't, I stay in the way. I stay in the way. We need to get out of the way. For in Him we live, amen, and, I, and we move and we have our being. Paul, what, Paul was, what was also being said there by Luke in the book of Acts um, is that our being, our, our, our whole uh, uh, everything about us ought to be in Christ. Uh, but, but the reason I am anything and the reason we are, we sing a song, we haven't sung it in a while, but we sing a song that says, I'm Mr. Nobody, trying to tell everybody. Look, I, the, the song says, that, says it best, that I'd like to go down in history as a nobody. Amen. All I want people to see is Jesus. All I want them to hear is Christ. Amen. Look, that's, that's our being. 1 John 4, 9 says this. It says, in this was manifest, and in this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Not only shall we have physical life here, not only shall we know what joy is by living in Christ here, but we really only have life in Christ. Amen. Now, we only have, we are, this old body is dying. No matter how young you are or how elder you are. Right? This body is dying away. Right? And I promise you one day if the Lord doesn't come back, right, the body is going to be put down. It's going to go back to the dust of the earth. Right? But I can tell you this, this soul is going to live on forever. This soul is going to go right on. Right? And we need to make sure that we are living through him. Philippians 2 and t 2 is, uh, verse 10 says this, this, that this the, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow uh, of things in heaven and things in the earth uh, and the things under the earth. Uh, and that every tongue should confess uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord uh, to the glory of God uh, for uh, the, the Father. Uh, so we see here 
that uh, every knee, whether they admit it here or not, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Uh, we know that there's coming a day uh, when everybody, when we leave out of this world, uh, you're going to have to stand before God. Uh, now you can stand alone or you can stand with Christ. Amen. Uh, and he's given us that opportunity. Uh, and we sum up all things in Christ. We can sum it up with these. Uh, he designed a great plan. Amen. Uh, he didn't design a plan that had to go back for revisions. Uh, I, I, here's what uh, I was noticing out there. I, I've been in construction uh, and around construction all my life, so I know how this goes. Uh, but I was standing on the, on the front porch out there as, uh, before service started, and Eddie came up, and he began to talk, and he began to tell uh, about his, he's having a bathroom remodeled. Amen. Uh, he's re having his bathroom remodeled. Uh, and he's, uh, he started out that uh, he was going to put in a, a four-piece shower. And then he was going to put in a shower base and go from there. And that didn't work either. Uh, plan, I don't know how many times the plan has changed. Uh, but it has changed multiple times, right? Uh, it has changed over and over and over and over. Aren't you glad God's plan that he didn't have to change it? Amen. Uh, he had a plan, and it was a, it's a great plan. Uh, it's not just a good plan, but it's a great plan. Uh, and not only did he die, but our sovereignty, uh, 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 now our sovereignty is work, uh, work it out according to his divine will and the fullness of time. Amen. Uh, he'll let us work out those things and work toward things. And uh, verse uh, number 11 says this, uh, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Uh, being predestinated according to the purpose of him uh, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Uh, it, you know what? Listen to what he says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 29. He said, And if you be, and if you be Christ, then ye are Adam's seed uh, and heirs according to the promise. Uh, because we are saved and born again, uh, we have, there's been a place predestined for us. Uh, we've got a place over there in heaven. Uh, I told you, he said over in the book of John, I believe it's chapter number 10. Uh, he said, in my father's house uh, are many mansions. Uh, if it not so, I would not have told you, but I go away to prepare a place for you. Uh, hey, aren't you glad to know that we've got a place beyond here? Amen. Uh, I'm predestined. I have a place. Uh, and that is a pl it's already for, uh, uh, predestined means foreknowledge. Uh, in other words, I know where I'm going when I'm done with this place. Uh, but Paul said it like this. He said, if this earthly tabernacle shall dissolve away. I've got a home in glory, amen? Uh, that's what we need to realize, and that's what we need to have assurance of. Uh, and that's what we need to be standing on. Uh, and that's what we need to be getting others ready to go. And we need others ready to hear, uh, to, to hear us about how important it is. Uh, listen to what he said in the book of Malachi 3.16. He said, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, uh, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before them uh, that feared the Lord. Uh, and they, they taught upon his name. Uh, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, and in that day when I may, uh, make up my jewels, uh, I will spare them as, no, as man spareth of his own son uh, that serveth him. Ain't that amazing? Uh, ain't that just amazing to know when that day comes? Uh, I'm out of here, amen? Uh, whether I go by the way of the grave or whether I go by the way of the rapture. Uh, one of these days. I'm going to be out of here. I told Melissa and I talk a lot about the big load. Amen. I, I'm not talking about a 16 car pile up. Amen. I, I'm talking about going in the big load. I, I'm talking about in the rapture. Amen. That's how I want to get out of this place. I, I don't know about you. I, I want to go in the big load. I, I want to go. Uh, I want to go all together. Amen. I, and we ought to be living like we are, and we ought to be living like we've got somewhere to go to. I, I told you a while back as we was preaching. I, we'll make all these plans and preparations to get ready for vacations and go on trips and, and do things. We'll get bags packed and may, we'll make lists and do all kinds of things that we don't forget anything. I, hey, listen, we're going on much, something much more greater than a trip. Amen. I, we're out of this place. I, the, the Abraham said it best. He said, I'm just a sojourner uh, passing through. Uh, hey, you're only going to be here a little while. Uh, I know we got some over here uh, uh, that are uh, quite a bit older than I am, uh, but I can tell you this. Uh, it's only been a twinkling of an eye, hasn't it, brother? Uh, it's only been just a little while. Uh, hey, I don't care how long you are, how old you are, uh, but I know one of these days it's all coming to us, uh, whether it be by the big load in the way of the rapture or whether it be by the grave. Uh, we're going to get out of here, uh, and the most important thing is to know uh, that we love him, uh, we serve 
of him and we've got Jesus in our heart. Amen. And I tell you, we want to make sure that we take as many people to the same place as we're going. You know, a lot of times we'll do everything we can to get away with nobody knowing and get by ourselves. It's good to be alone with Jesus sometimes. I remember, I don't know how many years ago it's been now, but it's been several years ago, the first time that Melissa and I ever went to Savannah, Georgia. We liked Savannah, and, but we, the first time we'd ever went. Melissa, we had started to go and had started some plans probably a year prior to that. And every time we would make a plan, I'd have to preach a funeral another plan I'd have to be called in Nashville and preach revival and, and this went on for a year didn't it and I mean it was over and over and over every time I planned something something Lord changed something or, or something got changed <laughs> Melissa said we are not planning anything we're not planning we're not we're not booking any hotel rooms we're not we're not putting any kind of itinerary together we're not saying where we're going we're, we're just going to get in the car and we're going to go and we're going to make no plans. About the, by the end of the first day into the vacation, I'm a planner. I'm a scheduler. It's what I do. By the end of the first day, Melissa said, we'll never do this again. We will never. Now listen, I, I, I'm a, like I said, I'm a planner but, and I'm a scheduler. But I, I, ha, I like having a plan, but things don't have to go strictly every bullet point by plan. But we do have some structure. We do have some way. Listen, those that are out there living in the world, they have zero structure. They have zero. It's a, they're the most miserable people, and they don't even know it. And a lot of times they don't even know how miserable they are. You know why? Because they've never seen the plan. They've never got on a plan. To never become a part of a plan. Amen? It blows my mind to listen to our government talking about debt limits and, uh, and, and the economy. It, it blows my mind. Uh, listen, in our house and in your house, uh, it, it, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be a scheduler or a planner. You don't have to, love, you don't have to like spreadsheets near as good as I do. But, you, but I, one thing I bet you know automatically, if, you, if you've lived on your own or you've paid your own bills any time at all, you know this much. You cannot pay more out than you have coming in. Or eventually they'll come and take what you've got and they will put you in jail. That's eventually how that works. Listen, there's so many people living and trying to live on borrowed time, trying to pay for something that they do not have and nothing's coming in. Now, listen, I'm glad to have a plan. I'm glad not only to have a good plan, but I'm glad to have the right plan. I'm glad to have the, the, the great plan. And that's the plan that Jesus made for us. Listen, he said if you want a home with him, what you've got to do is be born again. He said if you are born again, then what you ought to do is live like him. Are we doing those? His head's bowed, eyes closed, Christians praying, hearts searching. We're just going to give you one moment of invitation, one verse. He's going to play one verse right here, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Listen, it's all up to you. I told you already, it is something that you have to choose. It's something that you have to act on. It's something, a decision you have to make. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Slip your hand up, put it right back down and say, pray for me. If you're here tonight and you say, preacher, I'm not really sure whether I'm saved or not, would you pray for me? Slip your hand up, put it right back down. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not living for God. Would you pray for me? I want to be yet there. I hope tonight that everybody, amen, God sees the hand, amen. Listen, you may be here tonight and you may have raised your hand or you may not. But and you want to slip out of that pew and you want to get on this altar and say, Lord, I want to live for you. Lord, I want to be what you'd have me to be. I, I want my family to see you and me, to see you, you and through me. Hey, won't you come up here and be what God would have you to be? Anybody else want to come tonight before we pray? Altars open for anyone for any reason. Hearts and minds clear. Travis, you pray for us. Yes, won't you? I pray to Heavenly Father, you help us to be better like you are. We pray in your son's name, amen. Yes. Yes, Lord.
respect your person, there's a lot of us would have been cold. A lot of us been kicked out, broke back. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart? else hearts and minds clear be much in prayer one for another do not forget to tomorrow evening we will be working doing having a work day at the church tomorrow afternoon up the uh, at the fellowship hall and the uh, pavilion we're going to try to get things cleaned up up there and go through some of the building and stuff and see what we need what we need to get rid of we'll be I'll be out trying to do my best to be up there by five o'clock so if anybody wants to come be glad to have you I know uh, Johnny and him will be there probably around six Melissa will probably be there around five so we're going to just try to go through some of the stuff up there and get it took care of so if you could come up and be a part of that uh, there will be several more work days after that I'm sure because we've got a lot of stuff to get ready so be praying about all the upcoming events and things we've got going on we appreciate you we love you shake somebody's hand tell them you love them God bless you